Hello. Today we'll be talking about ionic compound naming part two. And what part two is all about is the use of ions with more than one charge. We saw yesterday that everything to the right of this red line is a metal. And everything to the right is a metalloid or a non-metal. And we combine a metal and a non-metal to give you ionic combinations. And there are predicted values, and we said that the values of this group over here is most times plus one, or if not all the time, and plus two. But there are elements. There are metals that occur more than once. And elements that are boxed over here, and even the ones at the bottom, transitional elements, are elements that could have more than one charge. Okay, so we box them up, and these elements could have more than one charge. For example, we could look at Fe. It has a charge of positive 2 and positive 3. We could look at copper, positive 1 and positive 2. And there is no way really of knowing what the charge would be unless we're given this chart. So for purposes of classes, we will be given this chart in order to solve out the name of these ions when combined with non-metals. So whenever we use anything on this chart, okay, that has more than one charge or occurs in more than one occasion, we have to be specific as to which element we're talking about. So if we have to use Fe, I have to use or say, sorry, either Fe2 or Fe3. For example, let's name the compound Fe3 and 2. So I go to the chart and I see that Fe occurs more than once. It could be either Fe2 or Fe3. How do I know which, what, which Fe this is? Well, this two came from Fe, and this three came from N. Those are the charges that we know of because they crisscrossed earlier. Therefore, when we name this compound, we have to be specific and say that, yes, it is iron. We're not arguing that. It is iron. But which one? Iron 2. And we specify by doing this. Iron 2, and in this case, is nitrate. What we did just now is specify which ion it is of iron. Let's do another one. Let's pick, for example, an element of this chart with more than one charge, and let's pick on, let's use cobalt. Okay, so we say that it is C, O, and uh, Cl3. Okay, I know it is cobalt because it is CO, naming it cobalt, and I know it is chloride because it is chlorine. However, which cobalt is it? Okay, in this case, it is cobalt 3 because this 3 here in chlorine came from cobalt. So I call this cobalt 3 chloride. What if the name had been, or the compound had been, COCl2? In this case, it would be cobalt 2. And this is chloride, chloride. Because this 2 here came from cobalt. And of course, of course cobalt has a 1, which came from chlorine. Let's pick another element. And let's use, now let me give you the name and you give me the compound. Okay, so I'm gonna give you 
let's use copper. Copper two and let's use phosphide. So I am giving you the name. I need you to give me the formula unit or the com or the compound in symbols. Okay, so I am using copper too. I know that copper is Cu. In this case, I am given the charge, charge of two, two positive. And phos phosphorus, which is phosphide, is P. So we use P, and I see the phosphorus is charge of three negative. So when I write this compound, it becomes Cu3, which came from phosphorus, and P2. In this case, the two came from copper. So copper 2 phosphide, I write as Cu3, P2. Okay. In this case, I know that this is an ion with more than one charge because I specified the two on top. Let's pick another one. Let's say that we're going to use, in this case, let's use gallium. Let's use gallium 2. And let's use sulfur. So gallium. Two sulfide is the name of the formula unit or the compound, sorry. And now let me give you the formula unit. I know it is GA. And I know it is an ion with more than one charge because I am given the specific two in Roman numerals. So it is GA, charge of two. It is sulfur, charge of two. Well, these two cancel out, and the name in this case would be GA. S. That is the formula unit for gallium 2 sulfide. What if I had used gallium 3 sulfide? Let's see what would have happened. So if we call this gallium 3 sulfide now, this becomes a 3 instead of a 2. I crisscross my charges. The 2 goes to gallium and the 3 goes to sulfur. So it is GA2S3. We have to be very specific as to discover which elements are on this list and if they appear more than once. If the element appear more than once on this chart, okay, on this chart that you will be given for quiz and test, then I have to be specific to mention which ion I'm talking about. Is it uh, copper 1 or copper 2? Is it gold Gold one, gold three. Is it uh, lead two or lead four? I have to be specific. Let's do one more. Let's use this one. Let's use lead. Let's use lead. And lead occurs more than once. It occurs as lead four, which is PB. Okay, let's use lead four. So the name would be lead four. And let's use oxygen oxide. Okay, I'm being specific. I am giving lead 4, which means it is a charge of lead. Lead, PB, charge of 4. And oxygen, which is in group 16 or 6A, charge of 2 negative. This is positive over here. Okay, the charge is crisscross. The 4 from lead goes to oxygen, and the 2 from oxygen goes to lead. So we write this as PB2O4. But since I have to give the answer in the smallest ratio possible, I will have to cancel or divide this by 2 and this by 2. This becomes 1 and this becomes 2. Because I went to the smallest ratio. 2 to 4 ratio is the same thing as 1 to 2 ratio. Therefore, we call this now ending name or proper name now, therefore, PBO2. And this means lead 4 oxide because I had to cancel the 4 to a 2 and the 2 to a 1. I hope this helps you out.